Ghetto Correspondent News Network. I'm your boy, Ant Dammit. It's Frankie Diamonds on the other end. How you been? All good, man. Trying to stay safe from quarantine and all that good stuff. Quarantining? Yeah, I know. This shit, this quarantine is fucking driving everybody up a goddamn wall. Uh, you, got, you drinking out the moonshine bottle? Um, Yeah, but it's water. You know, it's a little sparkling water. I just made two years, no drinking, and going oh, back. Congrats, congrats. Thank you, thank you. But um, yeah, so it's been a minute since we've been wanting to do this. Um, little quick backstory for you guys out there that's listening and watching. Um, this here is a, a show that we're doing for you know our people, you know ghetto correspondents. We're giving you the ghetto news. You know what I'm saying? Like the shit that y'all kind of care about, but you really don't care about. But we're gonna put our own spin to it. You know, create our own narrative in case the the white man out there try to take over and tell you something different. You hear exactly. it here first. Well, make y'all care about this shit. Exactly. <laughs> so um, not much has been going on in um, the ghetto community or the black community, as I want to say, other than um, speaking of quarantining, did you hear um, Jada Pinkett talk about something she doesn't know her husband? Yeah, I actually did a video on, on my page about that. Um, well, over the, over the weekend, over the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, she don't know him because, like, and I said, you know, a lot of people was like, yo, she clout chasing or she, I was like, well, you know, I had to look it up. Will's done, like, 50 movies. <laughs> never home, so, I mean, I don't think she, you know what I mean? This nigga been home for two months. That's probably the longest they've probably been together in a closed setting consistently in the whole 20-something years they've been together. Right. I kind of understand what she was getting at when she said that. I don't think she was just, you know. But a lot of people was like, nah, bitch, you just saying that. I was like, nah, you could be married to somebody and really not know uh, know them as much as you think. I think a lot of people are learning more about their spouses during this whole quarantine shit, being at home 24-7, because you can't just go to work for eight hours. You can't just send the kids off to school. You know, now y'all got to sit down and really gel. Yeah, y'all got to be around each other every day. And, like, what what was once routine is now not routine. So yeah. you used to getting up, you know, eating breakfast, making coffee, whatever it is that you do that's in your routine. And now it's like every day you just see each other. And I agree that they don't know each other because all they do is work. Like he's over here, she's over there. And a lot of people are starting to uh, understand things about their spouse that they never knew. Like they now they're starting to realize that they really like this motherfucker or not. Or they don't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A lot of people were finding out the things that they don't like that was being hidden or, you know, shit that they spouse would do outside. You know, now they, you know, they're doing it in the crib. Yep. And, and they ain't got no choice but to deal with it. And and I think part of me thinks that this quarantine is a little healthy for uh, people, especially black people, because we need to really understand ourselves and our families. Like people oh, yeah. just people don't know anything about themselves or the, their spouse, or they even their kids. Like, yeah, I, I seen it, my bad. I seen a video of this girl, she was this lady, she was breaking up, you know, some weed in her car, and she was complaining, talking about, y'all need to do something with these kids, because I don't know what to do with these kids. Y'all Trump, y'all need to give us some activities or something. I'm like, bitch, they your fucking kids. They your kids, exactly. <laughs> you can't send them to school for eight hours a day no more like you used to. You know what I'm saying? You used to just ship your kids off to somebody else, because school is kind of like, this, for some parents, school is like the babysitter. You know, we's gonna ship them off to school. They gonna deal with these badass kids. And I'm gonna go to work, and then we gonna come home, eat dinner. We might talk for two, three hours or whatever, and then we done. Yeah. And that that whole uh, routine has been broken. And like I say, these your fucking kids, bitch. Like you know what I mean? Now you gotta deal with them. You can't send them off to Miss Miss Smith or whatever at school no more. Nope. You got to sit there and deal with their little badasses. It was like the the first, I think the first two weeks of this quarantine is I think what we're like in six weeks or something like that at this point. 20, 20 years, it felt like. <laughs> it felt like forever, right? I, we, I, yeah. We've been seeing parents like, yo, they don't, they don't know how to fucking teach their kids. They're like, yo, what the fuck do they be teaching you in school? Now the parents are starting to understand that the kids aren't lying. Like this work is fucking stupid. Yeah. Like, the way that they got them doing that new math and shit, I seen so many different forms of this new math where they make kids take the long way home. Fucking new formulas and shit. 
how, how, how much more can they dip, uh, complicate algebra than it was when I was in school 10 years ago, 10, 10 12 years ago? I fucking hated algebra, yo. I'm going to keep yeah, it real with you. Bro, I failed that shit. I still graduated, but I failed. <laughs> Me too. I failed the shit out of that, but I got the fuck about it. Ed. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, parents are starting to understand that, you know, maybe your kid is as bad as the teacher was saying, and maybe That's you good. aren't as smart as you thought it was. And you motherfuckers really don't like your kids either. Like, I, I don't understand <laughs> it. Yeah, but like I said, when you can send them off to, you know, grandma house or school, that's a, that's how you deal with it. So mm-hmm. that option's been taken away. So yeah, this this quarantine has definitely made people have to uh, face their truth. You know what I mean? Face their reality. Like you can't just run away like you used to. Nope. You got to sit there and deal with these little badass motherfuckers. <laughs> same thing with your spouse, motherfucking your dog, your great grandma, everybody. Everybody. And so another thing that um has happened out of this quarantine is that. Um, or during this whole Corona, COVID, whatever the fuck you want to call it, uh, pandemic, is that people are starting to understand that like black people aren't as healthy as we thought we were. Because remember when the shit first happened, my was like, black people can't get it. Oh, yeah, 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 that, that ignorance shit. Like I said, to me, it's kind of like, um, and I'll go all the way back, like when, uh, remember when Magic came out and told everybody he had HIV. Prior to that, a lot of black people thought only white guys could get that shit, remember? Yeah, he they was thought like, it was uh, the gay disease, as they used yeah, to call it. Yeah, and he, when, when Magic put it out there, it was like, oh, shit, I think they said at the time more black people got tested after that than ever before, because they was like, oh, shit, Magic Johnson could get it. Then any, and I think that's what you've seen. When you've seen Kevin Durant and um, all of these black ball players and rappers and shit, you know, I think that's when black people started looking at it seriously. And um, now you look at the death toll numbers, and it's like, yeah, like people's grandmas and aunties, and this shit is real. And part of that is because of the access to tests, right? Like, mm-hmm. I was, I was, I was saying this too because um, studies have shown that more people have been infected with it than they originally thought, and the reason the numbers were so high is because as tests were becoming available, they were seeing it. So, like. They had like maybe um, up in Bergen County, they had the first day they had, they thought they were going to get like 300 people or something when they only, they were able to do like 600 and something people before they shut the thing down. This was like when they started doing the drive through testing. And right. yeah. And so they were on, they thought only 200 people. I'm like, why would you think only 200 people when you got half the fucking world, half the country? Yeah. Get your drive through testing, though. <laughs> Basically, you pull up somebody in the fucking hazmat suit, shove a goddamn Q-tip up your nose, and you keep it moving. Like okay. that's that's basically what it is. But um, the thing was that as more people got tested, the more the numbers rose, and that shit scared the fuck out of everybody because they're like, "Oh shit, yo, this shit's growing." But reality is, motherfuckers is sick. They just weren't able to like you. You got a whole fucking line. Of people, yeah. like and so as they now that they now that testing is readily available everywhere, you're starting to see the decline because now it's like all right, we done tested everybody basically, and we got in front of it for the most part, and now it's going down. Yeah, so I, I, I heard some shit about um some of these death toll numbers is kind of shaky because let's say if you tested positive for the virus, but you died two weeks later from a heart attack, they still consider you like a uh, COVID nineteen was the cause. Really? Of it. Yeah, I've been. I heard some shit like that. Like, so some of these numbers are kind of bastards. Like I say, just because you tested positive for it, even if you got killed, let's say you got ran over by a truck or a bus, they're still putting you in in the system as a COVID nineteen death related uh, person. So it only applies like unless the, I think they said if if you get a, a gunshot, like if it's a gunshot, then they okay. say all right. You die from that, but anything outside of a gunshot is COVID. Yeah, people that's just dying from other shit, and they just like, because they tested positive back in like uh, March or whatever, they just putting them up there. Oh, another one. I'm like, yeah. So, but I'm still seeing people partying and having cookouts. So, exactly. We, we got a good fraction of black people who still just don't give a fuck. Nope. And, you know, rightfully so, because f- first of all, we've been dealing with mad pandemics in our community forever. Yeah. 
So motherfuckers is like, yo, we've been like, I could die tomorrow from fucking something else. Like, yeah, kind of got that um, that that cowboy kind of fuck it mentality. Like niggas right. went through anthrax, niggas went through Ebola, swine flu, nine eleven, all this shit. So you you got some people thinking they you know bulletproof and just like fuck it, just winging it. But yeah. Nah, I think I think the more time I spend less from people, the more I appreciate it when we get back to hanging out again. I, I needed a break from some of these niggas, to be honest with you. I was already <laughs> fine with social distancing. Like I yeah, was like, <laughs> yeah, in the crib and said, you don't be going. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. They was like, yo, you can't go anywhere. I was like, sweet. Fucking yeah. bank account started looking a little nice. I was like, yo, this actually might not be a bad thing if you ask me. Yeah. Yeah. Stem check shit, you know what I mean? So everybody yeah. like, Beach over, they got. I'm like, yeah, okay. Well, they have. They opened up the beach uh, in Cali, and like over the weekend, they had like 300 new cases. I'm like, oh, the but then again, I don't know how real it is. I'm like, right. Oh, people wouldn't got tested in three days. Like, I don't. Yeah, exactly. But it's like Corona, COVID, whatever you want to call that bitch. She out here is she the ghostwriter? She getting all of the fucking the 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 accolades for people dying now. They just like sure. throwing that shit on her, like. It's, it's, the only thing I missed about it is fucked up like sports and shit like that. You know what I mean? It's fucked up. The Olympics is over. They they canceled the Olympics. Uh, NBA might come back. Uh, baseball didn't even start. You know what I mean? Like that's the only baseball thing. was trash anyway. I ain't it, was, shit. it was. I was saying for the people who do fuck with baseball, you know what I mean? The, all 128 games or whatever the niggas play. They that's do, insane. Uh, you know the season should have kicked off in March. Yep. Oh yeah, it was supposed to kick off in March, but listen. that might be good for them though because they needed to shut that shit down. That shit was too long. <laughs> Way too long. They played like what four or five games a week. Yeah, a hundred and some games a year. I'm like, yo, that, nah, I don't, I don't have the attention span for it. But I mean, just like I said, just uh, everything is. I'm hearing that the AMC might not open up their movie theaters again. Listen, I was already not a fan of going into movie theaters. You, you remember that movie <laughs> Outbreak? That yeah, shit fucking yeah. kept me out of movie theaters for years. Okay. Like, yeah, because I don't, I don't like. First of all, I don't like being that close to people anyway. And then like you yeah. in a room with with people and it's dark and it's like, all right, it's like it's too much fun. going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. I don't even like people hugging me. Like I, I like, I don't, I don't like hugging people. I don't like people who like get don't too close. Nah, nah. Like in yeah, anybody. Yeah. Anybody in my family, they know when they get a hug from me, it's like always a little weird. They're like, yo, what the? It's like, because I just don't like it. Like, <laughs> I can't explain it. Wow, wow. Yeah. But um, so in other news, your boy. <laughs> oh, oh, shit, man. I've been going in, man. Let me hold up. Before you, you talk about Umar, right? Yeah. That's why I call him your boy, because you've been dragging this nigga for a minute. I, and I, I just I, been sitting back watching. I don't really fuck with him like that. Clear it up because, like I said, now I always tell people I fucked with Umar years ago when he first came out. Not to say I switched up on him, but the niggas just become a character and a parody of himself. Mm-hmm. So, video about it. Uh, everybody pretty much dug it, but um, one of my loyal supporters or whatever, she they, they, you know, hit me up. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm subbing from your channel. You, you went too far, you took it too far. So, I, uh, he still got some people out here mesmerized, but yeah, go ahead with your Umar Johnson take, man. <laughs> so I, I don't even know how to preface this. This nigga want to run for president? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo, but when I saw this shit, I was like, that's why I, tell you, I was like, yo, for real? Like, is this real? Like, yeah. and then and then you go on his page, and he's got so much fucking like bullshit that's on his page where he's like talking about how they're um they're trying to hold on I'm trying to pull up my notes right now I know he had a long ass caption like this and somebody was like nigga we ain't reading all that shit (laughs) (laughs) niggas really don't fuck with him and the problem and, 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 and I said this on a video that I put out I said the reason is because Umar is the equivalent of the KKK for, for black people. Cause he's talking about this whole, like keeping the black blood pure. And if you date outside of the black race, then you're no good to him and all. And it's like, nigga, who the fuck made you the, the head nigga in charge? <laughs> I don't ever recall voting being like, yo, I, I take Umar as our leader. Fuck that. Nigga, give me- 
how do you announce you're going to vote? You're going to run six months before the election. And, but you, you see what the thing is? He wants the people to write in his name on a fucking ballot. I didn't even read all that shit. I know the nigga say Obama accepted. A, uh, he wants to debate Obama. And Obama accepted. <laughs> like, yo, Umar is, I think he's on some kind of drugs. I'm like, I think he's using the donation money to support his habit. Because I'm like, he, bro, is. he always was like real strong opinion as far as you were saying about keeping it all black. But it, it's gotten real cartoonish and real gimmicky. And I, like I said, he's like a boondocks character now. He's become Might as that, well be. Yeah, go paint the snow, you know, go paint the snow black type of nigga. He's become that character. And I'm like, bro, I don't see how anybody could take you serious at this point to help you put up this school, let alone run for president. You got to get the school up first, nigga. Right. And I and and I saw through his shit like years ago. And, yeah, and see, <laughs> and and people used to get on me, be like, damn, yo, what you what you got against? I'm like, it's just something about this guy just doesn't seem right. Like he just isn't all the way true, in my opinion, because it's like, nigga, you out here, you know what I'm saying, like. You 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 fucking with uh, strippers and whatever, and, and motherfuckers would be like, well, you know, nigga, got to at least you still fucking with women. It's like it ain't about that, but you're trying to create this this positive black image when you're out here, you know, chasing thoughts and, and knocking them up. That wasn't like, even really bothered me because I'm like, okay, he's a single man. What bothered me was when um, it's the arrogance of him and like you, know, you know, Tariq Nasheed. Yep, that's another one. But no, it's a, these dudes is arrogant. Did you see when they had that going back and forth? It was like a wrestling promo. Like, I'm going yeah. to Sunday at 8 o'clock for the high seat belt or something. It was just them two going. And I'm like, yo, these, like, can you imagine Malcolm X and Mega Evers or some shit back in there? Like, these niggas, like, they're more about themselves and building up their audience. And then they brag about, oh, I started Colors. Umar said, well, I started the woke movement. And, you know, I'm like, y'all are just really in it for yourselves, and y'all constantly begging black people for money. So you'll, exactly. you'll accept the fact that black people are poor, most of us, or uh, under the poverty line and ain't got shit, but yet you're asking niggas to give, I couldn't ask black people to donate me money, and I know majority of them is, uh, you know, fucked up yeah. out here. Motherfuckers ain't got it. Me people. And then he be shaming people who who donate. They like give him like ten dollars. He be like, "Thank you for the ten dollars." But next time, make it twenty. Make it uh, twenty. Like nigga, what? <laughs> all at the same time, while he's telling everybody how we broke and how slavery has, uh, you know, left us as the bottom of the, of the percent as far as the economy. All of that was just true. But yeah, you begging niggas for money. Well, put the cash app in the bio. Oh yeah. Uh, to the GoFundMe, I'm like, yo, I, I can't, I could never get on here and ask black people who don't have it. And this is before the STEM checks, mm -hmm. you know? Never sit here and beg black people who barely got enough to pay their internet bill, some of them, to fucking donate me money so I could pay my bills. Like, that's, that's, that's trifling, man. Super trifling. And this motherfucker, he really wants people to, uh, to write him in. Uh, he's talking about his school, um, the FDMG Academy is opening in summer of 2021. He, okay, he, yeah, I've seen that. he alleges that the DNC offered him two mil to uh, help restore school if he drops out of the race. This guy's got a lot of shit with him, man. <laughs> He's trolling. You know, I was just watching, um, I just did a video. NCAA had like a panel and it was T.I., Charlemagne, a bunch of, bunch of celebrities. And um, I said, well, you know what? They Black people are like using celebrities for some reason to speak on us. Maybe Umar's taking the, that route and saying, you know what? They only want to pay attention to the cool people and the funny people. And since he's been on social media, it seems like he's going that, that route. But it's like, we laughing at you. We not laughing with you. You know what I'm right. saying? You've become a joke. Like, you should have just stuck yeah. with what you're doing, even though it was kind of controversy and, and as far as his thoughts on, like, interracial dating and gay shit, but he still has some kind of respect. You might be like, yo, I don't really dig him. I think he might be a con, but I kind of respect him. Right. I don't think all of that is out the window now. Like he's just become a fucking punchline. Yep, literally. Like he like motherfuckers uh, uh, call you a uh, Umar or you know like just to 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 kind of slander you now. <laughs> it's like there's no, his name really doesn't hold any weight. And then he does have a lot of people um, as I like to say, brainwashed, basically drinking the Kool-Aid because oh, yeah. 
they they sit there and believe the shit that he says and nobody looks at it from like yo what's like the shit that he's putting out there is poisonous like we don't need to be um and i said this in my video right because i sat down with my grandfather last year and he said something super um poignant to the point that when he was um before he became um a police officer back in the 60s and 70s or whatever it was he was basically saying that you know he was the dude with the dashiki the afro he carried the 357 all of this shit and he basically said that when you wear your values on the outside people can see you coming from a mile away but if you play play the part doesn't mean that your values go away so you put on a suit cut your hair get the shape up whatever you got to do to look the part you can work from the inside out and that shit made so much more sense to me because I was like, this is why all of these movements that are happening right now, like Black Lives Matter and, you know, all of these movements, like people don't respect them because what we're doing, we're just loud and out there. You see us coming a mile away as opposed to, all right, you know what, let's take a different approach. Like fucking marching and all of that shit doesn't fucking do anything anymore. Nah, it doesn't. I don't know why niggas are still doing that. <laughs> the white people, they contested and they got their results like that exactly and and i get called a coon because i'm like yo we maybe we should try something different they're like man fuck you what's wrong with you and i'm like all right you know what fuck it like niggas been marching for 50 years ain't shit changed <laughs> niggas hit the walk the pavement I, i'm not marching for nothing if it's not gonna get done i don't see like that's the definition of insanity or crazy doing the same shit over and over it's like i say with these panels they keep doing these panels and ironically they only do them when it's time to vote Yep. Yeah. You know what they're trying to get you to do? They're trying to get you to vote blue. And, um, you know, I was watching that Revolt did it. Diddy did it. I don't know if you wanted to segue into that Diddy shit. You know, I did. I was waiting for it. Yeah. Well, Diddy, um, what, what, Diddy wants you to vote? or He wants you to. Uh, or die. No, he wants, he basically wants you to hold your vote. Hold on a second. I'm, uh, I'm about to pull it up. I got the sound bite right here. I've been waiting for this. For the longest. Hold on. What the hell? Why is my shit? Oh, there we go. Okay, where we at? Here we go. We're about to play this. The black vote is not going to be for free. We're going to have to see some promises. You know, what are we getting in return for our vote? Nothing has changed for black America. And in order for us to vote for Biden, we can't can't be taken for granted like we always are because we're supposed to be Democrats or because people are afraid of Trump. It's whoever's going to take care of our community, whoever wants to make a deal, it's, it's, it's business at this point. You know, we can't trust politicians, you know, so we want to know very clearly, just like Trump made it clear that he wanted to build a wall, Biden needs to make it clear that he's going to change the lives and quality of life of black and brown people, or else he can't get the vote. I will hold the vote hostage if I have to. No, you, you can't do that, nigga, but okay. Right. I've been saying that shit for the longest, man. Stop going to these voting polls and just hitting blue because moms or grandma told you to, or that's what they're supposed to. If you're going to vote, don't do it blindly. Like, do your research and find out who the fuck are you voting for and what their policies have. And what is The thing is, even if you do that, there's no policies that Joe Biden is going to do to uplift black people in, in any yeah. of that shit. If you just said so you might as well not even vote that's just my opinion because none of no one's gonna there's no candidate that has a chance of winning that's gonna do any of that stuff for black folks so i don't think politics is really the answer for us i think it's a big deal to us because we couldn't vote for so fucking long i think right. that's what it is and to to diddy's point though i fucks with it i agree oh. like we shouldn't just be out there just giving up our vote because everybody's scared of Trump and uh, what was his name? Kenny Burns um, basically told Diddy that his comment or his statement was irresponsible and that we need to come together to defeat Trump. Like Trump is fucking Thanos or something, yeah, like they <laughs> you know, it was like, okay, but my statement to, to, to Kenny Burns and, and Sean King and all of these motherfuckers is voting out of fear is irresponsible. Because if you're just voting because you're like, oh, we got to get this guy out of here. Who's to say that fucking Biden isn't uh, a wolf in sheep's clothing that's like here to fucking lead us to the depths of hell? Like, 
but he is. And I did a video on that, and I was like, yo, listen to this clip of him in 1994. Uh, basically in court trying to get a bill passed for mass incarceration. Like, he's not that right. much Trump, you know? But like I say, I think people vote out of fear, and a lot of Black people just vote because, like I say, you couldn't do it for so long. You couldn't vote till the 60s, you know? Right. As my parents were born in the 60s, so that's why we feel. But I think, like, the Asian community and all these, they don't, Mexican, they don't fucking rely on politics. Why are nope. we vote relying on politics? We're the only minority group that relies on politics, knowing they're not going to do shit for us. Yeah. So we believe, you know what it is? That's that slave mentality. Like we've been taught to believe that the, the motherfuckers are going to do right by us. Like, oh, just just pray on it. Just pray yeah, on it. Just like, wait. But how long y'all niggas gonna wait? <laughs> niggas that's gonna what wait. I'm saying. Like everything that y'all been doing before isn't working. Marching ain't working. I'm sorry to say it. I hope that you know I don't offend any religious people, but praying ain't working. Like prayer came from these motherfuckers. They gave you Christianity. Hope. Yeah. Uh, I hope that's what it is. That's it's, in, it's insane. Like when you was talking about with Umar, as far as his sheep, when you're a great speaker, because that's what he is. He's a great speaker, motivational, oh, yeah. speaker, like the, a pimp, a motivational speaker, and a preacher. They can get, always get a group of people to follow them because they're really great at what they do. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of pimps go to jail, come home, and become preachers. Yeah. Or motivational speakers. You know what I'm saying those people have the power of the the. the tongue like pause but they could just they can just move people verbally and get them to run through a fucking brick wall so it's actually a gift but you got to use it the right way you know mm -hmm. but you know unfortunately um we are stuck in these times and i feel like it's a little too late for us to be like yo um we gotta we gotta request more for for these people like if you ask me, Diddy probably should have came out and said this probably months ago when before Biden became the only choice because they fucking gave, uh, what was it, Kamala Kamala, whatever oh, her name is. Vouching for her for two years. But they gave her hell for locking up black and brown people yeah. as, a, as a prosecutor, but fucking Biden wrote the law to put motherfuckers yeah. in jail. Yeah, he's the last one standing. I remember when uh, Bernie Sanders had Cardi B sit down and do an interview, like, to, so we could find out what Cardi B's opinion was on politics. I like y'all really care about <laughs> Cardi B's thought process when it comes to democracy. I'm like, they, 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 we had another guy. He came down here. He was he had juvenile on stage. Like they've been trying. Yeah, I to saw that. That shit was funny. They've been trying to do anything to get the black vote for years, and it's like, damn, y'all think we that ignorant? Y'all could just get a, a rapper or somebody and say, hey, yeah, uh, he's endorsing us. Both like Bernie Sanders had Killer Mike. Yep. Both times. And it still didn't work, you know? Yeah. And Killer yeah. Mike is a great orator. Like, he's not, like, Killer Mike isn't dumb. Like, no, and, not. and that's what, right. like, yeah, that's what, like, you know, got me to being like, yo, you know, like, and I've always liked Killer Mike's music prior to, you know, him speaking out. And I was like, damn, this motherfucker really, been about this shit. He ain't just start talking about it. And unfortunately, people don't, I don't know what they didn't like about Bernie or what they didn't believe in him, but I can tell them motherfuckers like, yo, he's, Bernie is probably the only one that's willing to die about this shit. Like, oh, yeah. dude had a heart attack on the campaign trail and came right back like, nah, I'm still here. Like, if that don't tell you that this motherfucker is dedicated, I don't know what will. But he's almost 90. I think that's really the reason yeah. why he's old as fuck. And I'm like, I didn't know what he was doing coming back to run the second time because he was old the first time he ran. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, I lived in Vermont for like eight years. So all my yeah. Vermont friends, they're like, go Bernie. Go, burn. go Bernie. I'm like, I ain't never seen this motherfucker a day in my life. <laughs> oh, so you didn't know Bernie up there. You wasn't really. No. Up there. no. But I never paid attention to politics up there. Like, politics has never been my thing. And I've been explaining this to people for years. Like, as we said before, like, why are we relying on these motherfuckers to do for us when yeah. the only thing that they're concerned about is getting their, their fucking uh, mission accomplished? You know, like, yeah, we got to figure, right, we got to figure out a way to fucking take care of our people. And like, this quarantine thing is a good time now for motherfuckers to figure out their hidden talents. You know, like, you, you see motherfuckers on Instagram 
selling fucking masks or you know, making drinks, selling dinners, which I think selling dinners is a little sketchy because motherfuckers. Yeah, that's the that funeral shit. Mama got to sell dinners to get, get a son a coffin type shit. But, I mean, you're talking about cooking dinners in somebody's house and you don't know how their house looks. You know what I'm saying? Like, alcohol yeah. is one thing. Some creative shit was, you know, you ever see somebody, a candy jar, or somebody had a jar, like a dessert or something like that? Like, kind of like in a jar. I seen oh, like the made, mason jars. Yeah, where they had like macaroni and cheese. And some other greasy shit. <laughs> they were selling that shit on Facebook. Like some niggas getting creative, but the biggest hustle I've seen in quarantine is the OnlyFans. Yep. Which is a good segue into uh the next the next thing I wanted to talk about. But before that, yeah, OnlyFans is insane. Now, um prior to this, you know, there you didn't really have too many famous people. You had like Twitter famous people. And like the regular old, you know, dot on your your timeline who <laughs> show off her dick sucking skills, and you're like, okay, like, and I ain't gonna front. I checked out one of them once because I was like, yeah, I wanted to fuck this girl, but then I was like, I was watching, and I was like, Yo, this shit is mad weird, yo. <laughs> Five ninety nine a month. Right, I, I got in for one month, and I got the fuck out of there. I was like, you ain't about to get another dime out of me. I like they showed the um the they said like. Beyonce talked about it in one of her songs, I think, and shit went up fifteen percent. And then since February or whatever, since this whole quarantine, they 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 got, they got like two hundred thousand people on there now, like sixty thousand content providers. So you got sixty thousand people basically getting naked and putting it out there for OnlyFans. Like I don't right. know if that's on the board or because people just broke like that. A little bit of both. Um. I want to say, you know, because people are on Twitter being like, well, OnlyFans isn't just about fucking getting naked and having sex and like, yeah, whatever, motherfucker. Ain't nobody going to sign up for OnlyFans to watch you play the piano. Like, I ain't. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fuck wrong with you. Like, I mean, no. I about it, but I mean, it is what it is. Because once I see it in, in your bio, our, my, my, you know, what I think of you already changes. Changes, like, okay, right. You know, I, I already know what kind of bitch this is. Right. And I ain't, I ain't shaming the sex workers. Like, I support anybody hustle. Like, if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. It ain't for me. Um, but, you know, motherfuckers is going broke because motherfucking Safari got one. <laughs> Safari, <laughs> Safari and Casanova two times both got fucking OnlyFans. I seen Cas like a shade room put Casanova and he was like, He's scamming bitches, telling them $50 for this. Yeah. I'm like, is that real though? You really got a only fans? $50. And then, um, what's his name? Safari came out and was like, yo, that's too much. Motherfuckers is broke. Like, why are you doing that? I got 20 on the, like, what? Like, and that's when everybody was like, yo, Safari and Cass, they might be having money issues because you know niggas can't go yeah. out and perform. They can't do those club appearances. Yeah. I like, think you know and you to see that because a lot of people entertainers they can't do you can't do stand up you can't do shows you can't do anything so right a lot of them might have some undercover uh only fans accounts like when they just they don't even promote it or whatever they just you know right well here, man. that leads me to my next point um we have a, a resident um only fans um i don't know i guess connoisseur my uh, good friend, I wouldn't say, you know, great friend. I don't really know him like that. But I think we're going to have him come through and um, do this once a week. The homie uh, Raleigh Rittens, you know. Um, but those of y'all who know me and, like, what I've done before, like, Raleigh has been on um, numerous podcasts that I've done. And Raleigh is a porn connoisseur. So he loves fucking porn. Like, Raleigh is – he's into porn. And if you search deeper into this channel, you'll find videos of Riley up there talking about his love for porn and his um, his porno chicks. But this is um, what Riley's doing is Riley is doing um, OnlyFans reviews. And this shit is so fucking entertaining. So and I reached out to him last night. So before anybody be like, yo, why are you putting this man on blast? I reached out to him. And <laughs> next week, we're going to try and have him come up here and um, do his... Um, his review live on the the platform but these are a couple reviews that he did last night or a couple days ago but we're gonna we're gonna let rally be our resident um only fans reviewer because this is for the culture because i know a lot of y'all at home 
You ain't got shit else to do. You're probably doing a lot of fucking jerking off. So we might as well let you know which which uh, OnlyFans pages are worth the money. Uh, put your put your stimulus check to good use. You know, help a sister out or two or a brother, whatever is your uh, cup of tea. But let's listen to Riley. This is uh part one of two. But all she posts is tame shit on her main page. For the explicit shit, she go she gonna try to beat you over the head in the inbox. So subscribe at your own risk. They're recycling the original content from their website onto here and. Even though you're going to see a lot of masturbation, you're going to hear more music than you hear moans. And to be honest, you can just, you're better off watching it on Pornhub for free anyway. So, Capri Styles, I fucks with Capri, first of all. She got a nice body. She does custom videos. And I think it's like $15 or whatever, the main price. So, you should give it a You got the money in the ass crack. I fucks with Marie Love. Her prices are moderate. She's very interactive. You're going to see a lot of good stuff on her main page. And I don't think she's going to beat you over the head with the inbox material either. So you should give it a go. So the shit that killed me <laughs> was when my man was like, yo, her price is a moderate. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> yo, I fucked with Raleigh, but yo, he had to know that this shit is fucking hilarious. Cause I was like, yo, my man, like, this is, this is your bag right here. Like you, you know, this shit and you know, and he's he's these are all like porn stars, like chicks that you've actually seen yeah. on tape before. So it's like this motherfucker, he he reached into his bag. And so all right, here's part two. Subscription. Fuck no. Fifteen dollars, but worth every penny. She doesn't do the <laughs> inbox game. You see everything on the main profile. She's worth every penny. I swear. My G. Early two thousands, Ariana Saw was worth the subscription. 2012 Ariana Star washed. I'm sorry. No. Ass and lip job aside, she it's free to subscribe to her, but she got this pay per clip thing. But you can go to Pornhub and look her up to see if it's worth it or not. So at your own risk. 10 to subscribe, 20 for the exclusive shit. She a little chunky, but I fuss with her. She sucks. <laughs> Summer June, look her up. So far, Tahiri ain't so shit that I ain't already seen in the magazines or her Instagram page. For this $25 to be worth it, she better drop a sex tape of her and Joe Button or show a clip of her sucking off J.R. Smith's dick while he got a handy bottle up her ass. And that is Riley's OnlyFans <laughs> review. <laughs> yeah, that'd be going in. Yep. So he subscribes to all of those pages and then just... I don't know. We'll have him up here next week and we'll let him explain. Okay. I don't know. I don't know how he did any of his research, but I'm I'm willing to let him explain the process. Pinky? You want me with Pinky? Yeah. And she's washed. Is she on there? Uh she might be on there. I don't know. I'll we'll let Riley uh let us know. She's yeah. like a dinosaur right now though. Yeah, fucking dino, yeah. She's a porn. She's like she's a legend. Yeah. In which, you know, you can't take away from that, but it's like, damn, like, after point, you would think, like, with all of that money that she made, she would have kept herself, like, a little, little yeah. better, but. And that's a career, like, it's only really going to last maybe five to ten years. And like I said, once you get to a certain age, I think about 35, maybe 40, that's a wrap. Like, you know, you, you got to yeah, find. it's all downhill after that. Can't do that shit for 40 years. Nah, what's that that white chick still doing it? What's her name? Sarah J. She's still doing it? I believe so. And wow. she she and she definitely likes somebody grandma right now. Oh, you got that granny shit. People got that people like that granny shit too. So. Yeah, which is that that's a whole nother conversation. But yeah, so that looks like that's it for this week's um ghetto correspondent news. Um anything else you, you got you wanna uh, give them your uh your socials? Drop your plug. Uh, um, Frankie Diamonds underscore on Instagram and Frankie Diamonds TV here on YouTube. Uh, like I said, I'll be cross promoting the show on my channel anyway. So, right, right, Back yeah. So slow weekend. Yeah, it has been, but you know what? What's funny is it shit's going to like pass through the pipeline, and we just got to pay attention to it because mm-hmm. there's a lot of shit out there. Like I was looking last night and I was like, you know what? 
like the the two topics, the politics, because that them two like just went into each other. And goddamn Umar Johnson, man, that guy. He, <laughs> I would say pray for him, but I just slander people on praying, so I guess that's out the window. <laughs> and you know, love or hate Diddy, you know he has a point. You know, we do need to request more for ourselves <laughs> as black and brown people if we're going to put um our hope into to voting. Yeah. Or yeah. the politicians, how whatever yeah. the fuck we put in the I, I, I don't wanna sound, you know, don't people like you you, you shouldn't you should vote your auntie and then march so you can vote. Man, look, that shit ain't taking you nowhere. Niggas been voting for since nineteen sixty four. Right. And what the fuck do you see around here any different? So Exactly. I stance, but I don't wanna come off as the the ignorant. You don't you should still see people's faces when you say I'm not voting. They be looking at me like what? Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> like nigga, we've been voting since, since you know, since Malcolm X and them niggas was around, and what what happened? So, mm -hmm. Ain't shit happening. Go ahead with that word. So we'll be in touch. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all subscribe, like, um, you know, share this with all your people. Uh, get in the comment box. Let us know what y'all think of the show. Let us know your opinions on any of the topics that we um that we dropped. Uh, look forward to this. We're going to be doing a lot more, uh, but this is just the first of many. And um, salute to y'all. Salute to you, Frankie. I'll be in touch. Always, bro. All right. Take care. All right, man. You too.